We are done. Yeah. One of the most profound changes to American health care brought about by the Affordable Care Act is that it drove thousands of independent doctors to throw in the towel and join large hospital networks. This is particularly true of primary care doctors, as the rules involving medical records, billing codes, and prior authorizations have gotten more complex. Physicians find they can't survive without joining large health care networks, and they're increasingly demoralized. 48% of our present family medicine primary care workforce says they're leaving within the next three years. Doctors feel um, disconnected and burned out. We're seeing that in medicine, it's an epidemic. We gave away our business years ago to businessmen and they screwed us. So now it's time to take it back. Today, there's a small but growing movement of doctors who are opting out of the traditional healthcare system by no longer accepting insurance. They gathered at a conference in Washington, D.C. earlier this year. This new approach is called direct primary care but it's essentially a throwback to an era before insurance companies were responsible for covering routine services like ear infections or strep cultures. When I started uh, my practice in 2011, um, depending on your definition, there was maybe a dozen or a few dozen at most um, doctors who were operating in this model. You know, the direct primary care movement has grown. There's now six to 800 practices and, you know, more doctors than that. When companies like Aetna, Blue Cross, and Oxford started signing the checks for even minor healthcare expenses, it had a destructive impact on the doctor-patient relationship. The direct primary care movement is an attempt to reverse this damage. Pretty much everyone except for the patient controls the money, and, and that pretty much runs the show. Dr. Ryan Newhoffel, who's been running his own direct primary care practice in Lawrence, Kansas since 2011, has a page on his website that lists the costs of each procedure which the patient, not the insurance company, actually pays. I think what most people are accustomed to is someone managing their health care. For a lot of reasons, because we've been doing that for so long, they just cannot imagine what it would look like if they were just paying their doctor. Need an x-ray? That's $25 to $40, along with a monthly subscription fee that runs from $35 for minors to $130 for a family of four. Because I'm membership supported, I know what my monthly uh, revenues are gonna be. So if someone calls me, says, hey doc, I got this rash, can I send a picture to you? Sure, send me an email, show me the picture, I give you advice. If it's something I can manage uh, that's medically appropriate with a text message or email or phone call, I do it. So I would say, probably half of all of the care and advice I give is just remote. I don't, I don't have to bring people in for an office visit you know, every time they have a, you know, something minor. Direct primary care doctors are able to charge less than traditional practices because the lack of coding and billing requires less staff to maintain the practice. You're the only staff, you can do everything, <laughs> literally. In, in a fee-for-service world, um, every moment a patient isn't walking through the door is lost money. So most doctor's offices need to average 20, 30, sometimes 40 patients a day um, just to, to make, a, make a, a good business out of it. Um, and I don't have to worry about that. No. But uh, fundamentally, um, whenever you, you work uh, in partnership with your patients without the uh, interference of a third party, it really changes everything for the patient and the doctor. So we're able to be very creative in meeting their needs, able to give them transparency and pricing and just um, you know, redesign the entire healthcare experience around uh, what, what patients really need, as opposed to us being distracted by all of the third party uh, code and billing and all those things that the normal healthcare system has. Premiums too high, deductibles Lord too knows high, prescription drug costs are too high. The new Republican Trump care bill is every bit as mean as the old one. If we continue to let them have all the control, uh, there's no chance we can aid in that being direct primary care and not playing the game of the insurance. But ultimately the patient controls their own destiny, both in their own personal health care as well as, as, well as their, their, their health care dollar. There are some changes to the tax code that could speed adoption. The IRS doesn't allow patients to use their tax-deductible health savings accounts to pay direct primary care doctors. In fact, just having a direct primary care subscription disqualifies you from contributing to an HSA at all. Dr. New and others have been meeting with lawmakers and proposing legislation to change this. We are not trying to be shut out of the system. We're not living off the reservation just because we're cowboys. Uh, we're, we're doing it so we can provide good care 
but at the same time, we, we do need to, to, to figure out how we integrate with a larger you know, healthcare system. It is so much about that relationship that we're forming with our patients, and that's what really improves health outcomes. So much. Thank you for yeah. coming in, doctor. I guess before we had a name for it, before there was direct primary care, we couldn't really envision a way out of it. I'm talking collectively for doctors across the country. But now that there's a name for it, now that there's a clear vision of what direct primary care is and what being a great doctor looks like, more and more students and residents are aspiring to become direct primary care docs. Here's the thing, so you can be the doctor you trained to be, you can be the doctor you dreamed of being when you were a kid, and you have the opportunity to do it with no bureaucratic drag. The main reason I started my practice, um, and, and I started thinking about it in, in late medical school, early in residency, before direct primary care was even a thing, um, was because I wasn't hopeful that you know Washington D.C. or a state capital or insurance companies or employers or really anyone uh, uh, could or would fix primary care. Um, and so I, I, I can't say that I'm super optimistic that the politics uh, uh, and the powers that be are going to understand this or get it right. Um, but I think that the way that we're approaching it with this grassroots movement is the only way to force that change.